Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rena Dayal. I'm the Divisional Manager here for the Legal Finance team at Ambition. Um, and I'd like to welcome you to our Legal Finance Market Trends webinar for H1. Um, joining me today is... I'm Michelle. Um, thanks for joining. Some of you I may know, um, others welcome. And today's my 18th year doing Legal Finance at Ambition. Hi, I'm Archie Humphreys and I'm a consultant on legal finance and I work beside Michelle and Rena. Um, so in the webinar today, we will cover an insight into where we obtained our data from, pay and bonuses, key priorities for employees, benefits and the cost of living, hybrid working, diversity um, and inclusion, hiring trends and some time for questions at the end. Um, if you do have any questions during the presentation, please can you pop them into the chat box um, and we will try and answer as many as possible during our Q&A session at the end of the webinar. We also have had some questions that have been emailed in to us, so we will try and get through as many as possible. We hope that you find the presentation informative and insightful. So on the next slide, um, before we get started, I wanted to introduce you to the legal finance team, some of whom I'm sure you already know. Um, so Matthew Gardner is our Managing Director for Legal. Um, Olivia Kelly is our Associate De Director for Legal Finance. Um, Olivia manages our senior recruitment and works alongside um, Angelina Webb, who's our principal re researcher. Um, Michelle, Archie and I manage mid to senior level recruitment. Um, and we also have two associate consultants who recently joined us. Um, so over on the next slide, um, where did we get our data from? Um, we surveyed over 500 professionals from business service teams in the legal sector. Um, this consisted of hiring managers and finance leaders, as well as HR and recruitment leads in law firms. Every candidate we surveyed currently works in finance and accounting within a law firm. The report also contains data from the top 100 national and international law firms. 80% of these are headquartered in the UK and 17% in the US. So on to the next slide. Um, we really wanted to provide a true reflection of the market as a whole. Um, um, so we ensured we collected data from a wide range of firms. Um, as you can see from this slide, the firms that we surveyed had annual revenues ranging from under 50 million to in excess of 1 billion pounds, um, with finance teams ranging in size from less than 10 people to over 100. Um, therefore, regardless of um, regardless of you know, the size of the firm that you're working in, this, there should be some data in this report that you find relatable um, and um, you should have a good reflection of the industry as a whole. Um, I'm now gonna pass you over to Michelle. Okay, um, hot topic, pay and bonuses. So we asked our clients how much you plan to um, increase salaries in 2023. As you can see from the slide, um, the, the largest percentage was 79% at three to 5%. Um, that is pretty standard. Um, so yeah, something we weren't surprised by. With regards to bonus, um, we also asked the same question. As you can see, half at 50%, um, we're looking at a three to 5% bonus. Again, this is pretty standard. Um, a point to mention, not all firms offer business support staff bonus, um, and they're usually not guaranteed, and they are based on performance of the firm and individual performance. On the next slide, um, we thought this was a really interesting question. Um, we've asked our employees, if you change jobs in the past 12 months, what salary increase did you receive? As you can see, um, yeah, 38% uh, received a 21% increase in moving roles. Um, so yeah, some, some big figures there. Um, it does show what firms are doing to sort of recognize um, it is, you know, it is a challenge finding good people in the market. There's definitely over the last year been more jobs than candidates. Um, and as you know, a lot of law firms, it might be essential or very desired to have someone with previous law firm experience. So certainly um, it is reflective that where there has been that shortage of good people for roles, 
um, firms have reacted and been competitive with salaries um, that have been offered to attract basically and secure good people. Um, many salary reviews were put on hold during the pandemic. Um, so there were there have been some significant increases. We are seeing salaries leveling out. Um, so we, we, we do feel it's, it's probably not going to continue at such a big increase. Um, a point to mention um, when job seekers are looking for work, um, salary is often um, up there in their priorities for sure, and it definitely is a priority, but it's never the, the, the only priority. Um, so it's certainly worth really thinking about when, if, when you start to um, decide and think about moving on and looking for a new opportunity, it's definitely worth speaking to your managers and really thinking about what you're looking for. Some of these moves um, with these big increases um, would have definitely involved promotions. I'm now gonna pass you over to Archie, who's gonna go through key priorities. Perfect, well, another area we surveyed when conducting our market trends was the key priorities for employees when considering moving roles. One question we asked was, what was the main reason for moving jobs? where well, the majority answer with no surprise, a better salary slash benefits, which during the current times with talks of a recession in the mix, it isn't surprising with candidates worried about mortgage inflation and the threat of said recession. Clients are accommodating to this and are increasing salaries to allow them to obtain the right candidates. Following on from this, candidates highlighted that a more senior job title was also one of the main reasons for moving roles. However, despite people saying about a more senior job title, nobody selected career progression, highlighting that we're in a salary driven market where salaries are at the forefront of people's reasoning for moving roles. Overall, people are, are moving for pay rises rather than career progression, and clients are matching these needs and increasing salaries. Following on from this, we asked employees what are the three most important factors when considering a new role. Here, employees have highlighted, again, the most important factor when considering a new role is base salary. Further to the previous question, base salaries within the market between roles have increased over the last few years, leading to people moving for roles for an increased base salary. This has led to employees increasing salaries within the market to get the right candidate in a candidate short legal market by increasing the salaries. In short, this allows candidates to get more money for their experience and for the client to get better candidates. The other key priority for people when considering a new role was flexible working. With employees now wanting a better work-life balance, making sure they can have hybrid working for school pickups and drop-offs and just to accommodate to their busy lifestyle it is a big factor for an employee when choosing a new role. This does allow for more clients to be flexible with hybrid working, with them offering employees what days they want to go in the office to fix around their schedules. Overall, the key priorities for employees are being met by the clients. This is encouraging to see. And as mentioned, legal finance is a job heavy and candidate short market. So seeing this flexibility and change from the employers is encouraging for the market and offering some people their perfect role. Moving on to the next slide. We asked employees, what two areas would you like your current firm or a prospective firm to focus on as a priority in 2023? The most common response was bonuses. Bonuses are a great benefit to business service professionals. However, bonuses aren't guaranteed in all business service vacancies. But with employ employees wanting bonuses to move, we've noticed in the market that bonuses have been put into place within firms to secure candidates. This is allowing candidates to get their most desirable benefit and makes a firm more desirable to work at, allowing for the perfect match between candidate and client. Following on from this, the next area that employees want their next firm to have is good benefits. A good benefits package can be the deciding factor for an employee when choosing a new company. This has led to clients' compensation packages increasing in quality, again, allowing to attract the better candidates in a very candidate short market. Another key element highlighted was technology. The technology offered by firms can allow for a candidate's career development and progression, be it through them getting exposure to new systems or being able to cover a broader role within a business. 
We have seen the market with candidates wanting exposure to certain systems and some law firms offering this that just increases their candidate pool. This point, a company with culture, are driving points for candidates when choosing a new role, with new employees wanting to know what the team socials are like, the team culture, and what the company does to maintain a good team culture, as employees want to ensure they're making the right move when going to a new firm. I'm now going to pass you over to my colleague, Rena, who's going to talk about benefits. So benefits, this is an area that has been a real focal point for clients over the last few months. Um, we have been asked for data whilst many firms have been reviewing their benefits packages and looking at ways that they can enhance their offerings. Um, we asked a lot of questions around benefits in our survey, um, a full results and a detail, um, are detailed in our full report. Um, but we thought we would highlight some of the key areas or key trends that we found and that we thought would be of interest. Um, so, for example, the five most common benefits offered by law firms were wellness initiatives, referral bonus scheme, maternity and paternity leave, private medical insurance and season ticket loans. Um, whereas the five most desirable benefits from an employee perspective were remote working, bonuses, flexible working, private medical insurance and enhanced pension schemes. Um, interestingly, the only crossover was private medical insurance um, and other important um, um, benefits also mentioned, um, if um, further on the slide, um, were gym membership, study support, menopause wellbeing support, um, the option to purchase extra holiday, enhanced annual leave, sabbatical and life insurance. Um, so there's some some interesting data has has come from these questions, um, particularly from the employee perspective, as this, there is still quite an anomaly between what's being offered or what's seen as being offered by firms and what employees really value. Um, for example, remote working, um, you know, we do see flexible working being offered by many clients, but we don't see a lot of remote working. Um, and also, you know, bonuses, which Archie just touched on, you know, there are still some firms out there. That, that don't offer bonuses to business service teams. Um, and there are others that offer quite competitive bonuses. So, you know, this is clearly an area that um, that we I think we're going to see more development in whilst firms are still reviewing, you know, their packages and trying to make them more competitive and listening to employees. So hopefully we'll see some continued progress in this area. Um, so this takes me on to the next slide, um, which, um, covers the cost of living um so you know as i'm sure you're all aware the country is in the middle of a cost of living crisis um and you know there's there's talk of uncertainty in the economy you know it's a topic that's constantly in the press and covered by the media um so we thought it would be it would be good to ask firms if they were offering their employees any additional support um due to this crisis um 36 of firms said that they were um that they were offering um some kind of benefit to their employees um, so the majority of firms said that they were making a one-off payment and this payment was between 500 and a thousand pounds and other firms were being a little bit more selective with who received the payment and only offered it to those earning less than 55,000. Um, so, you know, it's good to see that some firms are offering some kind of support to their to their employees um, um, and 36 percent of them hence saying yes. Um, I'm now going to pass you over to Michelle, who's going to talk about hybrid working. Thank you, Rena. Hybrid working still remains a very hot topic, um, so we wanted to make sure we covered that. Um, so we asked our employees, how many days are you currently working in the office? Um, as you can see, 36% said two days, 33% were three days. We also asked how many days would you ideally like to work in the office and 38% said two days, 27% said one day. Um, the, the two days has always come out on top whenever we've done this survey. So there is a difference, obviously, what, what, what employees are looking for and what firms are actually offering. We were also keen to ask our clients, how many days are your employees expected to work in the office? And as you can see, yeah, overwhelmingly sort of 73% had confirmed three days in the office. 
this definitely um, wasn't a surprise to us. The, the, the bulk of the firms are offering that, and that's what they're looking for. Obviously, there are variations within that, but certainly, yeah, a lot of firms are looking for that three office, two home. It's interesting, though, um, that our candidates are actually saying that more of them are doing two days a week in the office. Um, so it does show that there is sometimes some wider flexibility within that. Um, you know, we have found clients um, stating that it's three days, for example, as, as a firm wide policy, um, but that it can sometimes vary within actual departments. This can often be linked to the type of role you're doing. Um, if your role perhaps is more uh, partner facing, etc., then it might be more key that you're in the office more than not. But yeah, there's definitely a bit of flexibility, it seems, within that. We wanted to ask our clients, um, do you currently enforce a set number of days in the office? Half said yes. We also wanted to know a little bit more about how they structure their hybrid working patterns. Um, so as you can see, some have 23% have anchor days. So these are days where there's a set day that the, the team are to be in. Um, obviously, it works well making sure from team collaboration purposes that, you know, you're not the only team member in um, on the day you go into the office. Um, but 41 percent um, is at the manager's discretion. So there isn't actually this sort of formal day in place, um, formal day in place that people should be in. Um, for some firms, 32% the days averaged over a period of time. So again, it shows that, you know, firms are being flexible. It's very individual to the firm and team. Um, and then 4% is at the individual's um, discretion. Um, certainly, um, with firms now offering hybrid working um, and obviously we've, we've all got used to that while searching for a role it's always worth considering the wider flexibility within that um, if that is important to you um, we appreciate when you've worked somewhere for a while you've built that track record with the firm and your manager so often there can be greater flexibility with regards perhaps the number of days you're in the office perhaps your hours flexibility within that, for example, if you've got family commitments or a carer or other commitments. So we would definitely recommend it's always worth finding out in the interview and speaking to us if you are searching for a role. We might have the brief from the HR contact that it's a, a firm policy three days a week, but as uh, I've discussed, that can vary within teams. So it's always worth asking that in an interview if that's important to you finding out how it works in that individual team with that manager and what the culture is like within the firm how it's working and also wider flexibility if that's important for you and how it works in practice within that team if you are a hiring manager on the call um, it's definitely worth making sure that, you know, you do discuss that in an interview and being really clear about how it works, um, because as we've seen it, it's a key priority for people in moving roles. We still get asked whether there are many remote roles out there. Um, and since sort of the return to work, it's been a common question. Um, certainly, um, from a legal finance perspective, it, it, it's rare, basically. Um, we've had the occasional role. Um, what we found is we've had some positions where, for example, it's a contract role. And as we've already touched on, um, it, it is a job rich market with less candidates looking. Um, so there aren't many people sort of with great legal finance experience sitting at home open to a contract role. So clients have sometimes struggled to fill these contract roles. Um, so they have, their preferred option may have been come in the office set number of days, um, but to secure that talent, um, we've had the old firm look at a remote option. And actually we've, as a team, placed a few people on that basis and it has worked really well. And again, yeah, the client was had to almost offer that to secure that individual. Um, so yeah, that, that, that was good that we've had that flexibility. 
there are some firms still wanting employees in the office five days a week. Um, it is the minority. And um, yeah, it does prove a real challenge for us when hiring. Whilst there are some employees that are happy to be in the office in, in the office full time, there's definitely less so. And the vast majority are looking for this hybrid working. Um, it is worth being aware that when you start a new role, um, there is some expectations from clients that for your learning and develop and that transition period um, to perhaps be in the office a bit more at the beginning. Again, that's something um, to ask us about or make sure we, we discuss that as part of the interview process. We feel um, this is still evolving and it's constantly evolving and certainly lots of firms are readjusting to this way of working and you know how it's working for individual teams but it certainly looks like it's here to stay um so yeah hopefully you found that useful um i'll now pass you over to rena um who's going to talk about diversity and inclusion thank you michelle um, so diversity and inclusion, um, it's still very high on the agenda for, for most firms. Um, therefore, we thought we would um, include some questions around this in the survey, um, in particularly, well, particularly focusing on asking employees um, for their view on DNI. So, so one of the questions we asked was when considering a new firm or a job opportunity, would you review the firm's DNI policy? 39% um, said yes. Um, whilst this may not seem very high, it is a significant number of job applicants. Um, we found that a, loss, a large number of um, candidates seeking their first or second job in the market and even some of the more even jun more junior entry level candidates place more of a priority on um, diversity and inclusion. Um, um, and will, you know, they're more likely to review these sections on a company web page, for example, before interviews. Um, and they want to take it even a step further than that and, you know, and, and plan on and actually do question employers during the interview process on how firms plan to achieve their objectives and what initiatives are they implementing to achieve these goals. Um, on the next slide, um, we asked employees what initiatives or policies they would like to see their their current firm adopt or improve. Um, as you can see, we've got a we've got a really varied response. Um, and some to highlight in particular are, um, you know, for example, reverse mentoring, um, hiring more foreign talent, um, much better gender diversity and ethnic diversity. Um, one which came up on the benefit slide, menopause awareness. You know, there's been a lot of work around this um, within firms, you know, whether it's workshops or, you know, just providing more of more support for, for women, um, promoting more partners from minority backgrounds. Um, and also um, another um, um, another one that came up was more kind of gender equality, whether it came through pay. Um, we've just had International Women's Day. Um, and, um, you know, you would have seen a lot of posts on LinkedIn about firms, um, um, you know, promoting the number of female partners that they have, for example. Um, so it's, um, you know, it's something which is quite a hot topic. And, and, you know, and people want to see, the employees want to see firms, I guess, being more diverse in this particular area and, and all also, I guess, being a little bit more open about, um, you know, processes that they've put into place about how they're improving these particular areas. Um, you know, some of the other interesting ones were um, blind recruitment, for example. You know, there are some firms out there that, that do recruit blind. You know, they don't want names on CVs or, you know, they would want um, names of universities, for example, removed or, you know, locations or countries where people studied so that there is no bias based on, you know, a candidate's name or, um, you know, where they did their education. You know, we don't see it a lot, but we do see there are some firms that do that do recruit in that way. So there were some interesting, um, you know, um, initiatives and policies that, you know, employees want um, employers to, to implement or improve. Um, so, you know, this is clearly an area um, that is going to be a continual focal point for firms and employees. And I think that we, we will continue to see development um, for some time to come. Um, I'm now going to pass you over to Archie, who's going to talk about hiring trends. 
Perfect. So hiring trends was another aspect of the market trend survey. We asked our portfolio of clients whether they'd hired within the last six months, where 87% said they'd hired, be it through additional and replacement hires or just additional headcount hires. Some hires for the additional headcount is an encouraging aspect to see as it shows growth within our clients, be it through extra revenue and needing additional people in the teams. With the current market since the start of the year, we also predict that the additional hires to increase with more clients hiring additional hires within the new financial year with firms finalizing their budgets and figuring out how much extra revenue they have and therefore the extra headcount they need. We also expect the number for not hiring to drop further, further down as already in the year, the roles on offer keep growing and leading to more opportunities and more firms hiring. Also, firms also need a replacement hire with there being natural turnover in all teams, be it through people going on to new opportunities, people retiring or people being promoted internally, create these roles where people always need replacement. Moving over to the next slide. This slide highlights kind of the unpredictable market will look like according to our clients and what they imagine their recruitment needs will be in this coming year. From our data, we can encouragingly see that 58% believe the hiring will stay the same, with 8% even thinking that hiring will increase over the next year. This is showing, based off last year, that 2023 will be a great time to access opportunities within the market, as it will be just as busy, according to most clients. Equally, with the new financial year and budgets getting put in place, even more opportunities will come available within the next few months when the new roles get approved. Overall, it's encouraging to see that most of our clients believe that the hiring will increase or even stay the same over the next year. Highlighting how it will still be a busy market going coming into the year and a great time to access those options when they become available. The next slide. So within this part of the market survey, we asked our clients where they believe and anticipate their hiring needs will be in 2023. From our data on the transactional side, the most hiring needs come in the revenue slash credit control. This is no surprise due to firms growing year on year and adding to their revenue streams and always needing additional hires in the revenue and credit control to cover this. Throughout the transactional side of legal finance, firms always need a, a biller, a cashier or a revenue person. Over the last year and going into this year, we've seen a rise in contract roles in these areas in large law firms where the extra revenue, they need the extra hands. So they put out the contract roles from six to 12 months. This accompanied with firms just genuinely always needing the billers, the cashiers and revenue is why these contract roles are a common feature within these teams. So interestingly, in the non-transactional space, it's not so evenly split as Archie just explained. Um, we, with management accounts and financial accounts, pricing and commercial and finan financial analysts being the focal points, closely followed by systems roles. Um, this has been, this has also been the case for the last six months. So it's, it's unsurprising that this remains a focal point coming into 2023. Um, we've seen firms increase investment in systems and the internal pricing functions, hence the continued growth in these areas. Um, you know, pricing in particular has seen significant investment over the last year or two with firms in, you know, increasing their internal um, pricing capacities um, and trying to meet the needs of, you know, these ever-growing firms. Um, so it's, it's, it's really reassuring to see that these continue to be focal points, but also very candidate short markets. So, you know, there are some great opportunities to, to develop your career, whether it be in a more senior position, a larger firm, um, or a move for, for, for a higher salary. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of opportunities in these areas. Um, so um, an exciting area if you're in these, in these spaces. Um, so this actually brings us to the, um, the final part of our presentation, which is questions. Um, so the Q&A um, part. So um, we will try and answer as many of your questions as we can now. OK, so one of the questions that we've had in um, is how to get into pricing. Um, and this is a question that, you know, we, we do actually get asked quite often. Um, um, it's, and, it, and it's, it's one that 
you know, we're likely to be asked because it's it's a highly sought after area. Um, and many candidates would like to transition into these pricing roles. Um, so to move into pricing, um, you would need to get experience in working with partners and senior stakeholders, for example, um, get exposure to providing analysis um, or data to support revenues or the firm in general. Um, if you're working as a revenue controller, for example, enhance your experience in working with partners and the pricing team. There is often some kind of overlap that you can get some exposure to. Um, if you're a commercial analyst or a financial analyst, gain some exposure managing stakeholder relationships, provide, um, you know, providing detailed analysis, um, try and improve your Excel skills and, and, you know, you may be intermediate, you may be good with pivot tables and VLOOKUPs, try and get some experience at the advanced level where you're building financial models. Um, you know, this, these are the kind of skills that are needed in a pricing role when you're producing detailed and complex pricing models. Um, and all of these skills are transferable into a pricing role. I mean, over the last year, we've successfully placed candidates with no previous pricing experience into pricing analyst roles. Um, these candidates have come from revenue or more the commercial analytical type roles, um, and some even with no previous legal finance experience or legal sector experience. Um, firms are investing into their pricing function, as we can see from the previous slide, where you know there seems to be continued focus on increasing um, hires in this area. And whilst there's a candidate shortage in pricing, it's a good time to explore your options. Um, so if you, if it's something that you are exploring or you're interested in finding out a little bit more, um, it's worth speaking to your consultant and discussing how we can assist you or, um, or even putting together a bit of a plan of action on getting yourself the necessary experience to be able to make that transition into that, into that role. Um. I've got a question. Um, a few people have asked it actually how to ask for a pay rise. Um, so first thing to do is it's definitely really worth thinking, sitting down, asking yourself why you want a pay rise and what you feel you've done to deserve one. Um, really think, have you had regular appraisals and a recent review with your manager and are you tracking in line with any set objectives and goals? Um, if so, be proactive, ask for a meeting with your manager and discuss it. Um, be prepared to, you know, to give your reasons why. If they can't offer um, you one now, and I think be prepared for that, it's not always going to be possible, then really what you want out of that conversation is um, some set targets, objectives um, that, that you can work to achieve and also have some sort of timelines in place. So make sure, you know, there is a set time for that to be reviewed and, you know, you make sure that review basically happens. Um, so it is really important that you've, you've had these regular reviews and appraisals. Um, and yeah, certainly, um, it's making sure that you know you you've got that in place, um, and like I've said, follow it up. So when you start looking for a new role, when you if you make the decision you're going to look, it's really important to really think why am I actually looking? Have I, ex I explored things internally? Um, am I confident there isn't anything else that my current firm can offer? And really think you know what's important. Consider pay, but also versus progression and your career plan. Um, so hopefully that was a few pointers there. It is a common question that we get asked. Archie, but, I'm sure you've seen a question. We've got quite a few. <laughs> yeah, another question that um, I've seen is how to approach a counter offer. So as discussed earlier, there are more roles and candidates within the current market. This leads to counter offers being a, a common occurrence when somebody hands in their notice. And I think when, when thinking about moving roles, you know, prepare to expect a counter offer from your current employer, uh, employer due to the market being so candidate short. Equally, I would recommend before starting your job search to make sure you've explored all internal opportunities at your current firm as a counter offer is highly likely. In regards to counter offers, 80% of people who accept counter offers leave, leave the firm within six months and 90% within a year. 
equally it's important to ask yourself at the start of you looking for a new role why am i looking is it a genuine problem is it a salary problem and just go from there overall it's an important to factor in counter offers when looking for a new role and having explored all internal options and speaking to your manager uh, it can allow for you to not have the tricky situation of a counter offer at the end Okay, thank you, Archie. Um, so sorry, we don't have any more time for any um, to answer any additional questions now, um, but we will answer these for you after the webinar individually. Um, thank you very much for joining Michelle, Archie and myself today. We hope that you found the presentation um, insightful. Um, please do not, please do contact us, sorry, please do contact us should you require um, any further information or want to talk about any of the topics further. We will share the report with you in the coming weeks. Um, we, hope, we hope you enjoy the rest of your day and have a great weekend. Thank you for Thank joining. You. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Thanks.